So in this section of the tutorial, we'll configure our frontline instance. So there's essentially five steps that we're going to cover when it comes to configuring our frontline instance. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new user in frontline. We're then going to configure our test code, our project for frontline. We'll then set up a GitHub repository for our test code and push our test code up there. We're then going to add in the load injector pools and then finally we're going to set up our load simulation in frontline. Let's start with creating a frontline user. So we've initially logged in with the super admin user. So a good first step might be to create, create our own user account. So we go to the admin page and users, click create. So enter any username, I'll call mine test user. I'll type in my first name and last name, type in an email address, and I'll just give myself the administrator role for now. Click save. You'll get a message that the user was created and it'll give you the password to copy. So just copy that password to your clipboard. If we now log out of the super admin user, we instead log in with the user that we just created. So in my case, it was test user and the password that I copied to the clipboard. So that password was randomly generated. So it'd probably be a good idea to change that password to a new one. So click on my profile and give yourself a new password for this user. Click update your information, the new password is saved. So the next thing we need to do is configure our test code repository to work with Frontline and to do that we'll be adding some Maven plugins. So we offer sample simulations for all of the build tools that we support. So there's samples for Maven, SBT and Gradle that are available. So if you just click on the download sample simulations button here, you can download samples for each of those build tools. So we're going to look in detail how to set up Frontline in the Maven project that we'd created previously in the course. So I'm here in the code repository of the code that we wrote in the previous course, the open source course. So if you don't have access to this, you can just browse to the GitHub URL shown and clone it that way. So I'm here in the pom.xml file and here's where we'll be adding in the plugins. So there are three plugins under the build section of the pom file that Frontline uses. So first we set the test sources directory and then we add the Maven jar plugin. So this is the, so that Maven can create a jar. Then we have the Scala Maven plugin. This is so that Maven can compile the Scala code. And finally, we add the Frontline Maven plugin. And this is so that Maven can build a package for Frontline for us. So now we need to set up a GitHub repository for our test code to live. And it's from this repository that Frontline will pull the code to execute the test. You have a couple of options here. So you can either use the GitHub repository that's already created, that already has the same code in, it already has all of the code and the POM settings show, or you can create your own GitHub repository and push the code there. So let me show you how we would create our own repository in GitHub. So we click the plus symbol, click on new repository, enter a repository name. So I'll just call mine frontline tutorial. So leave all of the other settings and choose create repository. Now we need to open a terminal. So we can either do this through the ID itself. So through IntelliJ, you can click on the terminal tab, or you can just use a regular standalone terminal. So I'm in the project directory. So I'm first going to do git remove, git remote to remove origin. So this is to make sure that I've got no links to an existing repository in case I cloned this earlier. I then do git add dot to add everything, and then do git commit then type in a git message and this will be the first git commit the first git commit that we're going to push to our repository so we'll call it initial commit and now we need to add the details that we're going to push to in git so we just need to copy this line for the git remote add origin we go back to the terminal paste that in here and now we're ready to push this up to git so we just we just type in git push minus u origin master let's give that a few seconds to push up if you switch back over to Git and refresh the page, you should see all of the source code in your repository now. So remember, if you're having trouble with Git or you just don't want to push your own repository, you can always just use the existing repository. It will work exactly the same. So back in Frontline, let's now click on Repositories and click Create. So we'll give our repository a name. So I'll call it Frontline Tutorial. 
So you can clone the repository either via SSH or with HTTPS. So if you use SSH, you obviously need a private key to GitHub. So just to keep things simple, I'm just going to clone with HTTPS. So I'll copy my GitHub URL here, paste that in. So this is the URL where our code lives. And because I'm going to clone with HTTPS, I need to get my GitHub username. So I'll just type in my GitHub username here and I'll put in my GitHub password here as well and then click save. So that's our repository added to Frontline now. We're now going to add the load injector pools that Frontline will use to execute our test. So we now need to add our AWS private key. So this is the key that we chose or created when we chose the Frontline instance through AWS. We'll give the file a name, so we'll say Frontline AWS private key and then browse to the front line to the private key. So you should tap this save somewhere on your computer. So choose the private key file, and then click save to upload the private key. So now we need to add a pool, and the pool is what we'll be using to create our load injectors. We'll be creating a pool of load injectors. So again, we'll be using Amazon EC2 for our pool. So we click on create and we'll give it a pool name of AWS pool. For the profiles, say use environment or system variables. So choose a region for where you want your load injectors to be created. I'll create them in the same region as the management console, in this case, North Virginia. Choose an AMI, so I'll choose the OpenJDK 11. Again, choose your VPC and subnet. And choose the security group. So, again, this is the security group that we created when we launched the frontline instance. So for the instance types, we recommend that you use C5 instances for your production testing as anything less is actually a burstable instance and your CPU tends to get throttled. So in this demo, I'm just going to use a T2 because I'm not executing a production test, but normally you should choose a C5 instance here. A key pair, so this should be the same key pair that we just uploaded previously. This will allow Frontline to create the injectors for us. Make sure you choose the same private key that corresponds to that key pair. Finally, choose an IAM instance role. So again, we created this earlier. This is the IAM role, frontline IAM role. So as a final step, we're now ready to create our simulation in frontline. So all the configuration is done now. We're ready to create our simulation. So we click on the simulations page and click on add. So let's give our simulation a name. I'll just call it frontline demo here. We'll choose the default team. We need to choose the class to run. So this is just the SCADA class um, that we're going to run for this test. So in our case, it's com.mygettingtest.mycomputerjourney. Let's click on next. So for the build, we're going to choose build from sources. We'll choose the repository that we created earlier. We'll choose Maven for the build command. And now for the pools, we'll choose the AWS pool that we created earlier. We'll leave it as just one instance for now. We can just click next on the other options. Finally, we can click save to create to create the test simulation. So coming up next, we'll execute our frontline test and we'll have a look at the test results report in real time.